Welcome to the final day of OPL Split 1. Hello everyone, I'm Jake Sports Iberia. Joining me on the desk for the last game of the regular season split and any tiebreakers we may have is Matthew fish Stewart as well as Max Alex Anderson. Gentlemen, it's been a long split so far, 10 weeks, but final day must be feeling pretty good. Oh yeah, oh yeah, feeling fantastic of course. It's been a brilliant OPL, this split. It's been new, you know, it's like it's, we haven't experienced this competition so, so incredibly close ever in OPL history. So it's really exciting seeing that every game we go into, anyone could be the victor, honestly. It's been wonderful. It's been wonderful to be, to be a part of it as well and really excited for tonight's matches as well. Yeah, certainly. Uh, and with the finish line in sight, let's actually take a look at the schedule, guys, of what the week has had in store. It was Trident 2 owing Infernum in game number one. Whilst Legacy were able to get over Avant, the scoreline doesn't really do it justice. Avant rounded out the season in fantastic form. Direwolves were able to absolutely decimate the Hellions in our final game last night. Whilst tonight we have our OPL Legend match, Challenges Sin, taking on the Chiefs. There is a potential, guys, in between that game and the OPL show for there to be a tiebreaker. That is if Chiefs win and it will be Sin versus Divals, but that's getting a little bit ahead of ourselves because they still have to be able to do that. And rounding out tonight, after whatever is our last game, there will be a brand new installment of the OPL show. It's a show that we're just going to round up the split you know, have some fun, talk about some interesting things and try and set the scenes for playoffs. So check that one out. However, guys, let's take a look at actually what the bracket is going to look like heading into semifinals next week. Legacy, our top team, 9-1, and one, have locked in that top spot. Their only defeat against the Chiefs and a dominant season for the OPL's first place seed. Whilst fourth seed can be absolutely anyone. That's what yeah. we're trying to determine today. Second seed can be out of the Chiefs and Sin. While third seed, once again, can be absolutely everyone. We have... You know, it's just going to happen. I would be surprised other. if for some reason Trident was doing it. Let's be real. <laughs> just completely perplexed. I hope not. But, you know. Something would definitely have, have to go have wrong. severely yeah. wrong. Yeah, it certainly would. But yeah. that is such a completed, uh, competitive and long way away. However, guys, we do have a very good matchup for you tonight. It is going to be the OPL Legend matchup for the last time as Sin are taking on the Chiefs on the blue side of the rift, at least for game number one. Hello. It is going to be Sin Gaming. Their top laner is Chippies. Jubes is their jungler. Rhymeister is their mid lane maestro. Cardred is their veteran AD carry. And Rogue, their rookie support. What a season for Sin. You know, we've said it all season long. A team that came into the OPL. Huge chips on their shoulder. Currently second place. I think people had them between fourth and sixth from what I saw in the predictions this year. That is a fantastic effort, even with the last game still to come. Yeah, and honestly, when they came into the OPL, they were very, very confident didn't find the results early on. And to a lot of teams, sort of, of course, it is since sort of second opportunity here in the OPL. They have done it before. But often if you start s slowly, things can be really rough. But Sin, they've only improved as the season's gone on. I agree with Atlas. They came into the split with a lot of expectations. A lot of people thought that Sin were going to do really well as well. But at a disappointing start. But they've rounded out the season fantastically. Yeah, and trying to ruin the Cinderella story, at least for Split 1 and turn everyone into pumpkins. It is your OPL Legends, the Chiefs Esports Club. Swiper in the top lane. Spooks their jungler. Swiffer, their captain, shot caller, and everything good about the team. Still in the mid lane. <laughs> Radia and Egypt are their AD carry and support. And Swiffer Clue was what we found out from last week's match between the Chiefs as well as Legacy. What a dominant performance from a team that we thought with their mid laner would struggle. He hasn't played the game for two months, but not missing a beat. Yeah, and it's not... And it doesn't have anything to do with Swiffer as a player. This is the ridiculous part, right? It's not necessarily Swiffer comes back and then carries his team to a victory like you may uh, pin to Rymeister and his performance on Sin because this guy literally picks up his team and wins a game for them. It's ridiculous. But Swiffer, no. He comes onto the side... Gives the team this ludicrous amount of confidence. We saw them diving turrets with impunity. Ridiculous stuff out of this roster. And it really unlocks them when they have Swiffer on the lineup. I like the idea that Cheese wasn't the problem in the mid lane. But Swiffer was the answer. I've heard this quite a few times. And it really seems like it after their series against Legacy. They played really well then. And I hope we continue to see that performance from the Chiefs. Okay, just a brief reminder, guy. Last time that we did see these two teams play, it was the Chiefs getting off to an absolute flyer in game one. But Sin able to come back with the reverse sweep and really upset the reigning OPL champions. What are we looking at going into this match? Because we've already seen it once this split. Is it going to be more of the same thing? Are the Chiefs much better prepared for it? What do you think this time around? Um, I actually think that this has a lot to do with the jungle matchup. Because Juve's performed out of his mind in the two winning games that Sin had versus the Chiefs. He didn't actually die. The last two games, like you said, 
we'll try to ignore game one as far as being a Sin fan is concerned because that wasn't great. But Juve's not dying. And this is a guy that's considered a weak link for the side. Is a huge factor. And this guy stepped up. I think 7-2 and 19 was his record against the Hellions in their last matchup. He's only going from strength to strength. And we'll see whether it's going to be Juve's that carries So is it through. still fair to call the guy the weak link? Because I've heard it all season long. You know, it has Sin it defended their jungle. Originally, yes. And now I think that like that can no longer be the case. Surely his last two weeks have been... Well, precisely. Phenom- three exactly weeks has been phenomenal, actually. I agree. He's been phenomenal. He, he started off really rough, just like the entire Sin did. They started off very rough coming into the split. Juves, uh, he didn't really impress me in the first few games that he played for Sin. But like you said, the last few games, he's been ganking really well, playing with the team really well, enabling the hard carries in the team like Ryan Meister to get ahead and making sure he can facilitate that. I think he's really stepped up. I don't think he can be called the weak link anymore. I think this has a lot to do with uh, one of Fish's favorite things to say, which is win conditions. And what Juves has understood is that this game is all about Rymeister. So basically what he does, he gives Rymeister all of this room to play in the mid lane. We often see him bringing a lot of his friends there at the beginning of the game as well. You get a bit of a four-man party, get the Diana ahead or whatever carry Rymeister is playing and really drive it home that way. The thing that Juve's really adapted to though was utilizing that pressure into the enemy jungle. And he does this every single time. Whenever you see Juves on the enemy side of the map able to take things away, it's often in a game that Sin are able to win. Yeah, it certainly does look to be the case. However, guys, this seems to be a very close game. The last game of the split, I want to get your thoughts on who is going to be the victor. We've done it all season long, and Fish has dodged many a question. So coming to you first, Atlas, who wins this game? What's the scoreline? Why are they going to win? Well, Chiefs are going to win. They're going to win 2-0. And it's because this team, as coordinated... As coordinated as they were against Legacy, will it's, it's it's impossible in my mind to be able to lose to Sin. I'm not going to lie to you. Okay, and Fish, what about yourself? Well, what do you got for me today? <laughs> once again, I'm going to throw another hedge better you and jump onto the fence and say that Chiefs are going to pick up this game 2-1. I feel like Chiefs right now with Swiffer back in the mid lane are more comprehensive as a team and work a lot better, and they look stronger coming to this. But Sin. We'll throw a curveball at them, especially with Ryan Mice. I think that in one of the games, he'll pick up a nice early game and have a dominant game with that. Yeah, I actually think that Sin are good enough to take a game as well this time around. I've been very impressed with their map play. I say macro a lot, and that's one team that definitely lives up to the hype. But ultimately, I also think that Chiefs will win 2-1. But we will see whether that is the case, because the best thing about League of Legends, guys, we get to watch some matches play. So here is Pastry <laughs> Time and Rusty to take us onto Summoner's Rift for game one. Thank you very much. And yes, we do have a few more games to play this evening, possibly a tiebreaker as well. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, Rusty. Game one of our last best of three for the OPL regular season. Again, 10 weeks have flown by. Playoffs are just around the corner. And the last best of three of the season is actually going to matter moving into playoffs. Absolutely. How far we've come and how far we still have to go with the unknowing potential tiebreaker to come after this. If... Sinner to pull a rabbit out of a hat essentially up against what is a monstrous Chiefs roster. Well, they know exactly where they want to be and that's up there in the playoffs. So second is what they're playing for effectively in this best F3. The Chiefs are also playing for that spot. So there can only be one. We'll see who grabs it in a second. Sin going to start things on the blue side. Red side is going to be the champ select side there for Chiefs. And Nidalee is actually the first fan away. So get it out. No more Nidalee. So Spooks and Jews actually sharing the champion as well. Seems like they are a little bit more worried of Spooks being able to keep Jews down with a champion like Nidalee. Of course, much more counter ganking, a lot less uh, ganking as well. So seems to be a very defined strategy there for the no longer weak link of Sin. Yep, certainly been looking good. The rest of Sin have really been on a tear actually towards the end of the split, all starting with their stellar super week. Callista though will be banned by Sin. That's certainly a champion you should keep away from Radia. And Gangplank will actually be the first ban there for Chiefs. So respecting the power, I believe they lost to it last time. Yeah, yeah. So Brawl Moss are going to be a ban. Starting to see this a bit more as well. This particular support, very strong, very popular. Teams are starting to ban it away. Is Lulu also the selection from Sin? Yeah, you're right. Brawl very much deserving of that ban. GP in particular, I don't think anybody was aware, including Legacy's mid lane of Chuchu's, <laughs> that Rhymeister had a Gangplank up his sleeve. But with Chippies on the team and Rhymeister who can play it now, that's almost a must ban champion. Yep. Just want to take it away. Don't give them that big hard carry. Greg is actually going to be the final ban from Chiefs. So targeting Juves a little bit there with that last ban. Nidalee is already banned. So there's a bit of a stranglehold on the jungle pool. Kindred's a really popular option yeah. that we've seen, but we haven't seen Juves play it just yet. But 
There's also plenty of power picks open. Sin, gonna take the obvious one, you have to think, and get Sivir for themselves. It's one thing to say obvious. I think this is the first time we've seen priority put on the Sivir, in particular this week in the OPL, but I entirely agree with you. I believe that Sivir at the moment is just absolutely ridiculous and does need to be taken by one of these teams. Of course, we're never gonna see a ban on it. We'll only usually see a pick because Callista is the bannable champion mm -hmm. because of how it works with the rest of the team. But in saying that, a nice first pick up here for Sim. Yeah, I like it. I mean, you can't really go wrong with Sivir. Most of the lanes are pretty good. Raid is a pretty formidable opponent, so denying it from him and giving yourself a nice, sa nice safe AD carry makes sense. But Chiefs with the standard response, Trundle and Poppy can be their first two picks. So not too sure where they're going, but two good champions. Yeah, definitely still flexible. Uh, Ejim shows that he can play Poppy as well as Trundle, no doubt. So we'll see where those two actually want to go as something Raimeister may only be hovering at the moment still needs to be discussed yep. because it's often banned from him, and that is his Yasuo. Now that is a scary Yasuo player if ever I've seen one. Yeah, he's such a strong player, and again, jokingly at the start of the split, everyone was telling us that do, don't give Sin the Wombo. They showed it off in a couple of games. They very rarely get this sort of comp. They might just build around it. I think Chiefs almost baited them into thinking about it. We're going to get some elements of it here. Thresh and Rek'Sai. So potential still there, but no need to take Yasuo just yet if you want to play it. There's also a long-standing joke behind yes. Chief Swiffer <laughs> and his uh, inability, I will say, to play Yasuo. Of course, it's a complete fallacy now. But when Yasuo first came out, he was getting destroyed by them. Said, you know what, I'll give it a go. So I go, and I think he lost like seven or so, maybe yeah. even more games in a row on the champion. And just all around had a very bad time and yeah. almost <laughs> vowed to never play it. But he's come around, he's able to play the champion. So it's just a bit of an inside joke. There. Yeah, just a bit of fun there. So going to return in kind there with his particular hover. Chiefs, though, do need to get some picks here. So maybe it's Yasuo. Could deny it away, but that would be uh, a curveball, I will say. The Chiefs are going to go in that direction. 15 seconds to lock down a few picks. Seems like top support and jungle sort of have picks locked in already. So the Chiefs are going to tell us a lot more about their draft with these next two picks. You'd so be very surprised if mid lane is locked in at all in this yep. part of the draft, I will say, given what they are capable of playing. Okay. Yeah, in other roles. Tricky Swiffer, trying to bait me, but I don't buy it just yet. Kindred Jin, though, are going to be the picks for Chiefs. So looks like it is going to be support trundle, would be my guess. Top lane Poppy. Jungle, Kindred, and Jin, which is an ADK that's been picking up a ton of popularity, particularly against the likes of Sivir. Yeah, absolutely. Sivir, Callista, I believe, are the other champions that are quite good for Jin to play against. Raider, in particular, has shown his proficiency on the champion. He's a very good Jin player and has been doing an awful lot of that in solo queue as well, tearing his way through the ladder, as he always seems to do. <laughs> I think that this particular team composition with Kindred is an interesting one because Kindred usually picked up with the Sivir or with the Lucian to have a low range AD carry that can sit there and spawn affectionately calls it the Beyblade Arena where you just throw boomerangs around everywhere and mm -hmm. start spinning on people but Jin's a different ball game entirely and that to me does indicate that it's going to be like a top poppy potentially yep. and it's more of a selfish kindred where you want to use it to preserve yourself. Yeah and maybe get aggressive in the enemy jungle. Sin though have actually finished their draft so Diana is going to be the pick again. We see this a lot from Rhymeister, but Ramus is the curveball here. It's going to be Chippy's pick in the top lane, just based on the current pick order. Uh, is Diana is not a surprise, but Ramus we haven't seen him in a little while. So the interesting thing about this is they've picked the Ramus into a Probably, trundle. Yeah. Oh, into, into a yes, trundle, yeah, which is like the Nautilus type of counter yeah. as well. I feel like there's an opportunity for Chippy to have a pretty hard time. I mean, Egypt also still plays Poppy support, so if Chiefs want to run a late audible, they can. As he, though, is the last pick for the Chiefs. Talk about popular mid lane champions. This one has been everywhere all across the world, and probably in your solo queue games as well. Tuf is going to take that one. It seems like Egypt is going to take that trundle in with the Jin. But again, like you said, very tanky top lane here. Ramus versus Poppy. The current Azir as well is quite APM heavy now that you've mentioned it, because he's got this inclination at the moment to walk towards his sand <laughs> soldiers. It's just an unfortunate appearance that it's now started doing for Azir. But you're right, the tanky top lane. I think whilst we were discussing what Trundle is capable of doing against the Ramus, he's not going to be seeing him in laning phase. That's more of a team fighting bonus that Chiefs will start to get. The question to me is, can Swiper keep down Ramus? It's not a great lane for Ramus, but what is, really? Yeah, that, that's sort of Ramus' thing. He hangs out, says OK a bunch, gets some farm, and then team fights happen. He teleports on top of your AD carry, they explode and your team wins the team fight. I think Sin, pretty straightforward plan. Two good divers in their solo lanes, decent pressure coming down, relatively safe bottom lane. Just kill the raid air. Everybody yep. always has the same plan. They've got a definite identity this time around. To me, killing the raid air does raise some question marks for Kadrid, though. 
he is someone that needs to show up in this particular last game of the split against the Chiefs. Well, it's going to be a tough series no matter what, but Sin have been on the rise. There you go, team comments once again on the screen. Of course, your hashtag. We'd love to hear you guys think, are thinking you're going to take this series. Hashtag Sinwin or hashtag CHFWin to cheer for your respective teams. And of course, if you just want to join the general OPL conversation on Twitter, always use that hashtag I am OPL. Tell us what's happening. Maybe what you ate for breakfast. Don't really mind too much, but glad you guys are watching. So make sure you include the hashtag. Is that the premise exactly. there? <laughs> Definitely, of course. You're right. The you composition that Sin has got very much indicative of how they play the game, but up against this well-rounded Chiefs draft, there are some risks if they fall behind. Well, it does feel very balanced for the Chiefs side, certainly, but we'll see what Sing want to do as they are going to move out into Summoner's Rift as five members, just having a quick check-in with those Keystone Masteries. Nothing too crazy. I do like the creativity from Rogue, though. Well, yeah, look, creative is one way to describe that. It is, in fact, a Thunderlord's Thresh. Rogue is one of the only supports in the OPL that does what he wants with Keystone mm -hmm. Masteries. I will say that much. Goes out star with Bond of Stone as an example this time around. Just wants to do as much damage as he can. Thinks he's Bard. <laughs> Don't blame him. Thresh entirely capable of doing that damage. Well, we can see early vision going to be put down here. So scouting for some sort of deep lane movement. So as we always think, a lane swap could be a possibility. Swiper though is spotted, I believe, in that top side. So, if Sin want to swap into different lanes, they can. But they have pretty good information as they're actually going to move back out together once more. The roaming war party. But it does seem that they are just going to go to their regular lanes based on current positioning. Although Raid is hanging out in the mid lane for some reason. And Spooks, oh, he gets a free CS. That yeah. walk's a little too so close to tower. This is actually quite amusing. Chiefs and Sin have both decided to walk mid to try and spot the other team through wards before they go to lane. Neither team going to spot anybody because they both did it and both now going to meet each other in a lane spot. Yeah, there's a number of people in these lanes as Raid is going to walk over that wall. Spooks and Swiper do start the jungle though, as we do have the poll out there as well. Thank you to everyone who voted out on Twitter. Currently the Chiefs in the lead at 72% to win. The Sin fans, not quite as loud perhaps as the Chief fans, but certainly you have to think that the confidence is there from both the team and their supporters. Sin always going to be the wild cards coming into this up against the Chiefs. No doubt the favorites holding that OPL legend title. They've got a lot to prove here, Sin. They've already beaten Chiefs once. Need to do it again. Well, see if they can. Be very impressive, certainly moving into playoffs as Juice is quite low on this red buff. Might not he be able to survive it, actually. He will die. Yeah, unfortunately, a little too low from that initial jungle clear. Everyone roaming top lane sort of hurt their X and there's the reset. Almost got killed for it. But we'll have to go to a different camp, which I don't know if he can start right he now. He had smite just available now, so he will smite that. And, okay, so... Fun fact with the Krugs, I know he just wanted the one hope potentially before he recalled, but the way that it works is if you focus the big Krug, you can kite around the small one by staying on the exact opposite angle to it. Juice, for the love of God, recall. <laughs> Krug gets impatient, goes home. Juice will now recall. He's level one at yeah, three minutes. Yeah, he's really far behind, unfortunately. Spook's level two already. Burned through a lot of the mana, but keeping relatively healthy on the Kindred. Now going to go over to Blue Buff, I believe. And hit level three and a nice scuttle crab to go down to as well. That is just a, like that is genuinely a horrendous start for this Rexai. Not the way that you want your first game against the Chiefs. The last game of the regular split to go off. And Chippies is in trouble yeah. too. A gang's coming now as well. Spook's actually down to the perfect time. Chippies, I think actually has to just have to taunt and flash away, but a great flash forward from Swiper blocks the power ball. Spooks with the first blood. And Swiper barely living as well. The turret doesn't want to connect with him and he gets out. Very well played from the Chiefs. Helps when you have a jungler nearby with full health. That was so stylish from Swiper. Absolutely. Burning the summoner to ensure the kill. As we're going to watch this one again. Let's watch it again. Yeah, Swiper gets him completely caught out of position. It's assumed that he was going to roll away. So Swiper was very much ready to go. The thing is, probably could have taunted the poppy and then didn't, did the flash roll. Might have worked out a little bit better for him, but unfortunate as Juice finally gets that. Pesky red camp. Yeah, I mean, maybe on the good side for Sin, Spooks not getting into this half of the jungle is actually going to be beneficial for Juves here. I mean, we know. We can see Juves. We know what level he is, but Spooks doesn't know that. He's assuming that he's actually cleared his jungle at sort of the same rate. But unfortunately, he's level 2 right now. Spooks is level 4, yeah. starting that Gromp. And he did bumped quickly, but this is sort of excessive. Yeah, and I know we keep talking about it, the fact that Juves is behind, but this is such a big deal because who's going to gank mid lane when Juves is stuck trying to kill his own jungle? How is he going to be able to duel Spooks if they ever meet in a one-on-one -on -one against Kindred, which is literally his baby sister, essentially, mm -hmm. in the way that you play the game? 
There are so many negatives that unfold from just that one problem that they're now encountering on Sim. And the standard lands looking good for Chief so far. Swiffer and Rymeister having a battle. Rymeister not able to get too aggressive with that. His ultimate, Swiffer doing a nice job keeping him back for now. Although the CS is looking good for Rye as he might actually be going back. Does have TP, used it already. We'll see if he does want to come and uh, influence the map later, but just looks like a second Dorans for now and some boots. As Chippy's and Swiper still at it. Poppy giving us a giggle. As we see Chippy's just with that cloth armor on the early back. Swiper with that Ruby Crystal instead. Yeah, a little bit of an advantage gained by Swiper, but no big deal to really speak of, I think. All summoners have been, in fact, used, including Spook, Spooks' Flash. So he may even go towards the direct farming route for the moment. Wait for that to be available for a ganks. Who knows? Yep, he's actually going Devour as well, which is kind of the standard we've seen. Nice, nice hook oh. there. Raidy going to get played back as well. Egypt going to try and get the fight happening, but the exhaust is already done. Rosso going to get turned around. Jin out of bullets needs one more. Egypt might have to finish it off, but Spooks is here to swoop in for the kill. Rogue is going to get marked there as well, and Spooks, ca Spooks picks it up. And Spooks now 2 and 0 on this Devourer to be Kindred is going to be potentially the catalyst of Chief's, Chief's success in the early game, especially bridging them towards the mid game. That is such an unfortunate start for Sin, but such a ridiculously good start for the Chiefs. Yep, the jungler in particular, Spooks, has been a big benefactor of a lot of different elements of this game. He's going to keep farming his jungle out, though. Going to probably have Devourer up very quickly at this rate. You can see the current gold. Just, from, just between the junglers, he's a thousand gold up already this stage of the game. It's just so frustrating to watch, right? Like, Spooks may not even know that it happened. At the end of the day, though, could potentially be something that cost his team the early game and adversely the game. Not the ideal start. Needs to get some ganks off, but level four. Yeah, a little tricky to gank lands when they're all bigger than you. As Spooks does return and get Devourer, by the way, so going to start getting extra benefits whenever he gets a kill or a count. Dragon also becomes... Much bigger prize in the eyes of the Chiefs. But Rogue moving down, going to clear this ward out. Ejim going to try and spot him out. He's going to just yeah. put the pillar down. Get annoying, but that pink ward does stay. Ejim going to reward with a green ward this time around as our standard lands will continue. Level 6 now for both these big tanky people. Nice taunt there from Chippies, but Swiper had grabs the Undying ready. And that's about all that we need in that trade. Yeah, it's also a very easy dragon to take, I will say, for Spooks now because it's a one-on-one -on -one bottom lane where... Swiper is controlling the minions. Swiffer could potentially rotate, but an unnecessary thing, I will say. Most importantly, having already got the Devourer, could solo his oh, hello. Going for a big play, but Swiffer doesn't quite get the ulti. Did not Rhymeister back. Spooks is ready, but... <laughs> Unlucky. I mean, <laughs> I'm going to say it looked great right up until the point where oh, it's it like... <laughs> wait. Not quite in range. It looked very smooth. It did. He just didn't click the right area with the E <laughs> and the Q combo, so... Swiffer, no luck this time around. Rymeister just very casually uses his ultimate to get to safety. As you can see it. You can see Spooks just out of screen, ready to go. Finds his moment. Rymeister just kind of casually walks above it and then ults to safety. Yeah, good spacing actually from Technically out-trades him as well. <laughs> just Diana things. Well, yeah. And that's also a concern is just Diana things are going to continue to happen. This is going to be a very scary teleport, Diana, if laning phase continues and he stays even. Solely just because he scales into mid-game with Abyssal Scepter and Nash just tooth very well. Well, he's getting there at least towards the Stinger portion. Does have a dagger now. We've seen this a lot from Sin. Ryan Meister gets his item, starts split pushing with the teleport. You have to think that play pattern will continue. Ryan Juves, though, are going to camp on top of this pink ward, see if they can't find a jungle or perhaps walking by. Or maybe Swift is getting a little keen. In fact, that's going to go straight in for it. Juice, though, he's going to jump in a little too aggro. I'm going to jump in onto Swift. I think he didn't quite no. get the reset on the ulti. Didn't get the reset on the ultimate. Would have been a kill otherwise. So a good flash from Swiffer. Gets himself to safety. Didn't have to cleanse the knockup or anything to get the flash out sooner. Spooks. Coming in to help his buddy. No surprises that he's in mid lane. No, not at all. In fact, this is potentially a match where we see a lot of 2v2 action in the mid lane. Mm -hmm. And Spooks is at least going to hold this one for now. I think he was protecting the farm. But Swiffer going to officially recall and move, get himself a full Abyssal Scepter, actually. Nice farming there in the early stages of this game. Will definitely help against the Diana. Yeah, Jew's also here as well. Spooks, though. He's actually looking at 1v2, though. Yeah, he no will kill Jew's, actually. No flash. Red buff there as well. He's going to keep chasing in. Almost enough, but didn't quite want to flash for that last auto attack. Spooks, though, you can just see how strong he is at this stage. And how weak Juves is. Look at the difference in items 
and how long Spook has actually held onto this Devourer for. He knows he just sent Juves back as well. If he finds him jungling, he will take everything from him. Also saw that Juves didn't have a red buff around him, so there's a chance that he looks towards the red, but thankfully Juves is six. Yeah, Juves actually uses his ulti, does get back and start taking the red buff immediately. Chippy's even going to move up, put down a pink ward just to give a bit of extra vision. Rydo, I think, wanted to get aggressive, does go in for it, but Spooks ready to spring the trap. Rydo, plenty of ulti charges left. Chippy's even powerballing in. Slowly but surely, everyone's entering the mid lane. Yeah, this is the standard Sin strategy, naturally, but just the assumed pressure as well by him being around. Swiper pinged him missing, so naturally the Chiefs will respect that fact and doesn't really matter too much because as he rolled, he turned around and just rolled faster towards bottom lane. He's already here on time. Well, man, that's pretty quick. And Swiper does push a wave in, but Chip is, is there to answer in time. Blue buff now over to Rymeister, so a little bit of extra power for a few minutes. As we are going to check in with Radio, does have a BF sword. Siva also with the same item, but you can see Radio and Egypt zoned, foaming up nicely, and yeah, zoning them off. They big issue for Siva. Yeah, that's actually a really big deal. He should have a bit of extra money though, and as is the balance of any bottom lane. Once they go back, get core fields and boots. You would imagine Chiefs get pushed out, do the same thing themselves, and it just comes down to recall timings as to who is in power. The thing with that though is if the Chiefs work around having the power in items and they go for a Rift Herald as an example, and Spooks will be stronger, get more objectives for the team, and maybe look to siege down turrets instead. On the flip side, Sin could do the same thing. Well, we'll see what happens is they're actually keeping these lanes as 2v2s in the top side, so Dragon Pressure a little relaxed, but certainly a threat still from the level 8 Kindred in particular, who now is a Hex Drinker, add it into her inventory. Right, though, feeling pretty strong at level 9. I have to think he's not too far away from that Nashes, although he does did go Sork Shoes, actually. Yeah. With that Fiendish Codex, so... He might be a little bit away. Very aggressive, Yeah, I will say. It's pretty, uh... I want to get in the Abyssal Scepter Azir's face and mm -hmm. actually do damage to him. Still not just get Magic Resistance out of the lane. Which is smart, I will say, from Rymeister. Adaptable with his build. And sooner or later, he will have his first item and the strength will increase. As Rymeister is... Pushing his luck with that ward. Yep. That's what I will say. Oh, bottom lane again though. Chippies could be in trouble. He's going to get locked up by the Kindred. Cripple is down. Juicy, but a little too late. Spook's going to get that first kill. Lamp Despite is available, so Juice not entirely safe under this turret. Spook's still going to eat a few shots. Does save the ulti, but the kill's already there onto Chippies. Yeah, and they actually are still looking menacing. I think it was cooldowns that they were waiting for. Swiper and Spooks. Definitely a dangerous duo lane. And it's good to see Spooks' focus on Swiper as well, recognizing that it's a poppy against the Ramus, and that Swiper is in fact doing well in this lane, ensuring that it stays there if not amplified further. Denying off some creeps there as well as the turret does fall and go over to the Chiefs. Pretty big gold lead already for them. 4k up in just under 13 minutes. TP used. 3v2 coming. It's going to be a 3v2 soon, but maybe not enough. Cardred, he's going to get the damage down. Radius is going to fall, but Swiper's in. He does put Cardred into the wall, but the Trundle's coming around. Chippy's also able to come up as well off the respawn. He's Swiper. He's going to go down, and Sin pick up two crucial kills in top lane. Absolutely necessary kills, and Sin are successful in picking those up. Doesn't look like the Chiefs are done. The Spooks is coming up here also, but look how fast this goes down. What an easy thing to deal with is... Eating Egypt. Eating got taunted. He's going to get flayed back as well. Just tanky enough to live, though. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Did have to burn the ulti. Spooks, though. <laughs> going to try and shoot them down. The Dark Passage able to save them. Chiefs there in time to save the turret, but not their teammates. Essentially, this is now a battle of fight where Spooks is not. So he was in the bottom lane recalling. They knew he was there. And they make a play on the opposite side of the map here, Sim. Very effective stuff as Swiper. Gets locked down immediately after Raid Air Jin. Very easy to lock down if Thresh hits one of his spells. Yeah, Rogue definitely started that off nicely. So will pop back into live and here, watching Swifter clean out some creeps. Still on the Abyssal, so probably has a, a bit of money. of money that he's sitting on. He's he probably got like 1600, maybe a little bit less. Yeah, there you go. Hey! You know what? Six upside down. Close enough. Oh, Raid Air though. Okay. Gets absolutely monstered by Rymeister. That was just walking up there as well. You can see where the problems might start here for Jin. It's well and truly started. Doesn't even have his Nash's tooth. The burst is just unbelievable. There's Radia right trying to ward. Doesn't actually get the ward. Can't even use his flash over the wall. And then loses his ward. <laughs> and then loses it. <laughs> because there's a pink ward for Sin. It insult, just, insult to injury there for Radia. To be fair, smart play from Rymeister. He actually recognized Radia died. 
He's going to come back to lane. He actually came up by himself because Ijin was late to recall, trying to defend the turret. Bam. Easy pick. And Chippies gets a turret. In fact, I think the minion technically That's received two. credit there. As it could be too. Here, Swift are going to try and defend. Batista trying to take the dragon. They will get it. But Sin will actually pull away, knowing that the rest of the Chiefs are in the area. But that's great damage to the mid lane turret. Level 11 Diana, real scary at this point. Yeah, and they're still keeping Swiffer here, which is actually a very big deal. We saw he just had 2,000 gold. Mm -hmm. Well, now he's stuck actually farming waves, not utilizing that 2,000 gold. And effectively, Sin, they are stronger than him. Yep. I mean, the gold lead's what? 1k up? 2k up for Chiefs almost. But that's gold that Swiffer hasn't spent yet. Hook lands in. Swiffer does get the ulti out. The box is down. Sin are going to tower it over him. But Spooks pops the land for a spite. And Swiffer surfs his way to safety. Sin, though, are going to take the turret. And start getting yeah. themselves real close to the gold lead. Absolutely. Sin, they get what they were looking for. Two summoners burned on Swiffer as well as the ultimate. Spooks uses his flash and ult. They don't get anything for it, Chiefs. In fact, they lose everything. Diana's on the board. Thresh is hitting hooks. This is still a good start for Sin. Because Rek'Sai, it doesn't matter how you start in the jungle. You're still a Rek'Sai. Yep. Sin to hook there as well. So Juves, plenty of utility to add to that team. We'll get tank here as the game goes on. Swiper though has transferred top lane. So he's going to work applying pressure. And looks like we'll reset into standard lanes. Uh, Dragon, of course, did go to Chiefs in and amongst that, so Spook's happy for the Devourer stacks. But Rhymeister, he's got that Nashes up very soon. In fact, I think he's going to go back for it now after taking blue buff. And Wouldn't you have be to think if it's more. the play pattern's obvious. Go to a side lane, starts cliff pushing. Absolutely. Sin, they've definitely recognized their win condition in these games, or at least in this number one game. And they're able to play to that by successfully getting through the early game. Only about a thousand behind which is quite impressive given how it started and I actually was going to mention this it's not a big deal but Gragas works in the same way that Rek'Sai does yep. in that you can essentially hide weaknesses you can either hide weaknesses in jungling routes in lane swaps or you can hide weaknesses as a player if you feel like someone's a weaker player you put them on Rek'Sai there's so many benefits to being Rek'Sai slash Gragas and right now Juice may have had that bad start but Rek'Sai hides that as a kit on the champion he's always going to be relevant with his knockups. Yep, there's Rogue. Another hook almost lands in there into Swiffer. Had a really good start to his Thresh game. We knew he was a good Thresh player. But Rogue's, I think, definitely been a player that started to stand out on Sin. As they've started picking up more wins. Sun Turret goes down in the mid lane, so Swiffer no longer has his short lane to try and farm with. Radia takes a turret hit. Trying to take this turret down. Does get that first crit down, but needs to reload the rest of the Chiefs here, though. There are a lot but here's Rymeister, and he's going to absolutely monster this turret. Yeah, so Swipe is going to have to deal with Rymeister. I would imagine that he can actually getting that early magic resistance. Not doing a lot of damage to him just yet, Rymeister. Needs to be a little bit careful down there, but Jews, no surprises. No, not at all. He's right down there with him. I think without vision, it's pretty easy to spot Jews a lot of the time. But it's amazing as well, because like, Chiefs are pushing top lane. They've got three men strung up there. Chippies is trying to defend it. They're like, you know what, Chippies? You leave that. We'll get bottom. Yep, and they do. Always trading. They actually get the trade. Three to two now. Up in turrets for Sin still. As they're able to take the bottom out. Uh, map starting to get real open. TP down. Kadra pops his ulti. They're going to go for Spooks. Whoa. But Rymeister may be over-aggressive on that play. Yeah, I, I mean, it's an Essence Reaver completed as well for Kadrid, so the cooldown on that Sivir ult, not a big deal. It'll be back up re reasonably soon. You can see the cooldown ticking now. Rymeister. Swipe actually okay. fighting him. Spooks here as well. They're going to use the ulti and try and lock him down a bit more. W popped. Rymeister can't get out just yet. Does take Spooks, so as Drews is going to move in for a knockout. Swiper though, flashing in. He's going to get the kill. Now it's 2v2. Kadrid and Drews taking on Swiper and Spooks. Rogue here as well. Might deter the Chiefs, but they are going to keep pushing in. Reinforcements are on the way. And Sin, they lose one. A Swiffer going to make the big play again. Ulti not <laughs> quite there. Good play from Rogue. Oh, Chief Whiffer is on point today, <laughs> isn't he? Hasn't hit one of the ultimates just yet, but don't worry. Azir still hits late game. He's always relevant. And unfortunately, it missed not even hitting the spell shield from Kartra. So, so close, too. Oh, it's, it's very close. The intention's there. Absolutely, and it wasn't a bad move to go there. And the big deal to me is still the fact that Swiper took down Rymeister. The split pushing options are there, but they actually want to hide him as <laughs> Chief <laughs> Whiffer. Uh, I love how Rogue actually puts up the box out of confidence. Yeah, as well. he's like, oh, he's coming in. Chief is actually locked up here. Sin getting sieged by the Chiefs right now. Trophy down. That will block some of the way, but Chiefs have to back off as Spooks is quite low. And there is jungle to be taken. Swiffer actually going to go ahead and get his blue buff. 
There's a Raptor Sense will proc there and take that out. Blue there as well from Sin puts down earlier. They'll be able to clear that out. Swiffer will get his blue. And looks like everyone's going to recall and we'll reset. That was greedy from Swiffer just now. He just got the blue buff, the two mini blues and a ward <laughs> there all at once. So you know what? We've definitely established the dominance in this jungle mid lane <laughs> synergy. <laughs> Swiffer the alpha of the two. It's one of those things, you know, he hasn't played in a while. He's been on vacation, you're out for a couple months. You're thinking, you know, some elements of his game, maybe not there. The instincts never die, Rusty. And the mid lane instincts of get every CS stay strong with you forever. It's also the old school Spooks and Swiffer dynamic. So the instincts aren't even necessary. Spooks is happy to obey his will, essentially, and concedes them. Well, to as unwilling as he might be. <laughs> that's 40 gold. <laughs> 70 with the ward. Spooks is sated, so he's getting, he's getting the big can. Oh, he's so he's going to be happy there. Yeah, he's actually stacked that up quite quickly with a more of Malmodius to boot. Void stuff up for Rai, actually, so a lot of two items starting to come through with one and a half for top laners and carries right now, but you mm -hmm. can see where the strengths are kind of central around the map for both these That's teams. That's also a very early Void stuff. He doesn't necessarily have enough ability power to make it efficient, but they have enough magic resistance that it will be efficient now and scaling very well once he gets his third item. So, Oh, oh here we go. All right, Raid, going to look for it. Needs to find Rogue. Kaido actually pops the ulti. They're going to try and get in there. Rhymeister with a good little flank off to the side. But Chippies! Whoa! Whoa! Straight into the team. And now straight out by the looks of things. Egypt He's not does out. ult him up. He's forced to flash. So maybe now safe for the Chiefs. Get a lot of cooldowns for that. Yeah, the Chiefs don't actually burn anything besides the Trundle and Jin ultimates. Summoners standing and teleports burnt by both top laners means we could get some crazy rotations. The Chiefs naturally. They want to get him sated. No, he's already sated yep. rather. Take the objective. Uh oh. Take the objective. Dragon's angry. Resets. Goes back home. Spook's able to take him out, though. Temperamental beast. He's a little bit. Ooh, Swiper. Hello. Straight onto Kadrid. Good hook, though, from Rogue. Snare there. Does land onto Chippy. Swiper taking a lot of the damage on the front side as Juice. He's going to get locked down. Kindred damage off the chain right now. And it's just so much poke from the Chiefs. Yeah, they've got so much poke with both Jin and Azir. Even Spooks to an extent. But Sin's game plan doesn't revolve around enduring the poke. That means fighting and just working around. Rymeister trading as best that they can. So pushing in this top lane, naturally, <laughs> is going to be the Diana. And we'll see if he can make something work when he finds Spooks right oh, now. We've seen him two levels up. Spooks has to be a little careful, but lots of uh, health back there on the W. Little did he know Spooks was coming. <laughs> Could have actually just bursted him out, forced the ult. Well, takes the farm that he can get, does go back home. Swiffer actually going to do the same. So Rylai's going to be on the way. Looks like he does. he's going to have the need to see large rod up first. So it could be a bunch of different things, but we have seen Rylai's be the standard mm -hmm. third item on Azir. And Swiper, busy with two tank items, going to clear out the mess Rymeister made there. But Rymeister, so you know what, Poppy? Take a long time to kill. I don't really like you too much. I'm going to go to the other lane. That's what they should be doing, though. Just because Swiper is going to be annoying, I think is the best way to describe it. He wants to chunk turrets, Rymeister. He wants to make sure that he's trading or being in the off lane, not directly in the split push lane, because Chippy should be dealing with Swiper at all times. Swiper, on the other hand, doesn't actually have his teleport, and Rymeister is the only person on the map who does. And so he's actually at a point of power through split pushing. Well, Chippy's... Ooh, locked down. Lantern can't be taken just in time. There's a dancing grenade. We'll follow him all the way down to his outer mid lane turret. <laughs> Rymeister, though, not pushing too far down yeah. that lane. Just going to make Swiper answer him and then probably go back to topside. TP's are back now. He's actually flanking. All right, so actually going to look for a fight here. Potentially 4v5. Kadrin, he's going to get chunked out, but Adrian could be caught out. Rymeister all the way around. He wants Swiffer as the first target. Swiper almost cancels him off there, but now he's sort of caught out in position. He's going to get hooked as Rogue's hook will go wide. And oh, code no. call activated. There's one. There's two. The slow's brutal at this point. There's three. Fourth hit. He's going to land onto Rogue. The Chief's going to try and fight Chippy's back. Swiper caught. locks it down. Chippy's tanky, but not tanky enough. As now Swiper in the front side, taking a lot of damage. But only one kill. And the Chiefs disengage with nobody dead. Sin have a lot of extra health, though, on three of their members still strong. I don't think they'll be able to actually push anything further, though, as the recalls have been successfully through from Chiefs. They don't get the kill. No, they don't. An aggressive use of that TP again from Ryan But he also was in a very awkward spot. So the teleport was inside the red pit, and he had to walk around the red, through the bushes, through wards, and then actually get in. So Chiefs were able to successfully avoid the teleport flank, and it was actually just a front-on fight. 
Well, Chiefs managed to do well there. Getting themselves a kill, avoiding any danger. Swiper back topside, though. Probably getting real sick of Rheinmeister here in this top lane. It's like a walking rot portal. Yeah. And avoid <laughs> the lane that's got someone in it or just keep them busy at all times. Just grind their gears. Well, I wonder what Swiper is going to go for next item, actually. And Spook's also topside, making sure Rheinmeister's actually left the area. Ooh. He would have been poking his head into the wrong bush there, Spooks. <laughs> it's a dangerous man to contend with. And it's not getting easier, unfortunately. Seeker's arm guard now there, so Zonis Arglas on the way for Rheinmeister, and he's got so much experience more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Highest level in the game right now, I believe, at 15. You can see just how many side resources he's been so getting. The other thing, though, is that Chippies is 12, so he's getting all of the experience, and Chippies is falling behind on a champion that, honestly, now can't fight Swiper at all. He actually just can't. He's behind 40 CS, he's behind two levels, he's also 0 and 3, and the relative items that he has is okay. And that's a concern, which means that Rymeister is actually the split pusher for the most part, as another teleport's coming in and another flank. Yeah, here comes Chippies this time. Sandy gonna try and start another fight. Chippies, he fires Radium, gets the taunt down into the backside. Swiper gonna try and cancel it off as Lamb's Respite is gonna try and keep them all alive. Poppy Ulti channel does get two. Rymeister's now Chippies caught. gonna turn things around. Rymeister just eats so much damage. And Radius Curtain Call gonna try and lock down more. That's a crit. Jubes goes down. And the Chiefs answer for two. Two big kills. And once again, Sin trying very aggressively to execute. No one's going to be able to get in the back line and help out Chippies. Again, he's not exactly the strongest member. His kill threat was good. All Red needs to do is flash and gets to safety. Here's the Baron started up. Yep, nice and aggressive from Chiefs, but confident in their call here. Chippies going to get absolutely chunked out by the Azir. Already getting a yeah, little low, gone. but Egypt's going to zone them out. Baron absolutely dead. As Chiefs managed to claim that, and a big lead for themselves now. 26 and a half minutes in, they're going to go back and have big buys. They absolutely are. And talking about Sin's strategy as well, revolved a lot around their scaling and split pushing, but you can't afford to scale against a Jin and an Azir. They will genuinely just start out scaling you with damage, and that's why they've gone for these aggressive flanks. They've recognized that what they need to do is accelerate the game. Void Star picked up for Rymeister does indicate the exact same thing. It's just unfortunate for them, honestly, because these flanks haven't been there. The follow-up, definitely not there. Rheinmeister has not been able to get in. No, he hasn't. And that's been the problem. You have to kill these carries. They kind of stand in the same place for a lot of the time, especially once cooldowns are down. The Chiefs are not done on the push. They do have the Baron buff. Both the teleports are in side lanes. And that Sin just going to lose two turrets straight down the mid lane. Yeah, and the most important turrets as well in the game. You don't want to lose those mid turrets. They'll get a cheeky sun turret back of their own, but so much control has been lost on this map. Rheinmeister is well and truly out of position because Dragon's about to be taken, but they'll just walk to him before it. Thankfully, I, That just here. looks so funny, by the way. It's the red turret on the blue side of the map. It does the feel map. wrong. Ah, uh, good times. Sin, though, like you mentioned, not going to start that Dragon. Should be able to get it relatively straightforward, so having a Dragon at this stage of the game, always nice to get the first one. Juve's able to smite that one away. Chiefs... Do the right thing. Go back and reset instead of getting too aggressive and greedy yeah. for the objective. But big items out now. Sterex finished there for Kindred. Rylai's finished now for Azir. Jin even with two and a half items of his own. I think Radio hasn't shopped, actually. They might have a bit more gold to spend. They're actually, like, reasonably far ahead, almost exploding out of nowhere, I will say. Mm -hmm. Chiefs after the Baron were only 4k up. But Sin willingly essentially give them two turrets by splitting. And feels like they're almost committing too much to it. Like, that's their only option now. But, I mean, is it just because they're waiting for Azonias? How long can you afford to wait? Because that lead's getting too big now. Yeah, 6k up for the Chiefs. And with Baron still on for a little while longer, about a quarter of the duration left, is Swiffer going to get aggressed on here, but the ulti is going to kick them all out. Rogue deal with a nice hook. Swiffer locked down. Wow. Chippies takes him out. That was such an aggressive and confident decision out of Sin. They recognize their strengths. They are just a team that is well and truly flanking everything they possibly can. That will essentially quell the Baron threat that the Chiefs have, but with one last push remaining, Spooks is making it work. Yep. Maybe. Uses what duration he has left to do good damage. Yeah, no, Chippies, you're not safe. Huge amount of damage to a defensive ball called Ramus right there. Yeah. So the other thing as well is always going to be Cardred on this Sivir, able to impact all aspects of team fights. I think that Sin 
need to take solace in the fact that Kadra could actually carry them when the game hits late. Rhymeister, of course, needs to be able to deal with the person split pushing and as the swiper, which is why he's stacking magic resistance. Also then runs the risk of dying to Kadrid is the most important thing. If the team is sculpted to deal with magic damage only, you're looking at physical damage in this game and you're saying, Kadrid, this is on you. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to carry. And that's the thing for Sen. They've got two uh, good, I would say, support players in a lot of ways between Kadrid and Chippies, but Rhymas has always been the star. It does feel like they've their wins have come together when their other carries have stepped up mm -hmm. and been able to make a bigger impact. So you're absolutely right. Either Kadrid or Chippies need to really do something big in this game to help, you know, along with Rhymeister. We've seen Chippies, he started down because of the way they distributed their goal. It's probably not him. Kadrid, three items, not too bad. Actually ahead of Radio and CS. Sin just need to find that one magic team fight they always seem to get. But the Chiefs are very good at not, uh, not making mistakes at this stage of the game. Yeah, they absolutely are. With an advantage as well, it's so hard to close or bring back any disadvantages that you might have if you were Sin gaming. I feel like... We were calling Juves the weak link of the team at the start of the split, and he's definitely changed the way that the team works. He's carrying a lot more. He's showing up as well with his performances, and it feels like, to me, consistency is actually the mediocrity of Sin at the moment, and that is Kadrid. So he's, this is his best opportunity, I will say, as an individual player to step up to the plate. Well, it's a big series for both sides here, but I have to think particularly for Sin. Still trying to prove themselves here. Chiefs, though, do have the lead in this particular game. We'll see if they can't close out as efficiently as they were known for last year. And looks like they are just choking out vision on this top side of the map now. Baron not up just yet, but Dragon's down as well, so might as well control this part. Hellpot's up for Swiper, but not for Rhymeister, who's now going to head his way back as Chiefs are going to finish the job that Kindred started a few minutes ago. Yeah, this turret's very low. It's going to be difficult for Sin to stop it. Rhymeister is actually too close to Swiper as well, so no teleports available for either of them. So far, so good for Sin, but the wave will be impeding soon. Is that recall? Yeah, Swiper's going to go back. They both are, actually. <laughs> Make him mind A truce up, has been called. Swiper. Oh, uh, he wants to cancel the recall. Oh, uh, he doesn't. Not enough movement speed there on the W. He's going to get a bit more free time on these waves. But Rai is going to go back and go top lane. Yeah. Join his team. And that also means that Chiefs can't continue that push and they do have to back away. Swiper actually fake recalled about four times for no reason and then decided he was going to cancel it, which was obviously a little bit too late there. So Rhymeister gets back to base, gets his shop in, has the Zonias as well, most importantly, to get into the back line of these team fights and then be untargetable. Gives more time for Kaldred, more time for Chippies to even get a second rotation of Taunt off. That's fun. She was like, no, nope, these are mine, mate. Card says, okay, you can have them. As <laughs> yeah, we are going to just reset a little bit more. Team, team sort of jockeying for position on this map. Baron up in 45, Dragon 110. So objectives on the way. We'll see which team fancies what objective at this stage. Have to think the Baron probably a little bit more valuable. Objectives definitely on the way, but Chiefs already had like three pink wards around this Baron area and purchased four of them. So they are set up at the moment. Dragon going to be up shortly after it, I think is the other thing. I'm going to be Chiefs third. You value that move speed quite highly on champions like Poppy. We've got a lot of options here, whereas Sin's options are to probably just the Baron. Probably. I mean, TP is almost back up for everyone, so could see another big five-man play. <laughs> Sin Sin use their flanks nice and aggressively with the TPs. I'm also unsure if Swiper would ever die to Rhymeister at this stage, so I think the Chiefs are actually quite content with letting Rai split push and then making picks around the Baron area from the vision that they're establishing. Well, I think Sin might have heard you because it's such... Starting to group a little bit more for maybe a team fight. But right now, team's just sort of waiting. Spooks does get spotted Ooh. out there by a Prey Seeker. The Rhymeister's about to see Swiffer. And you can think like a Rhymeister for a second. That's someone I can kill by himself. I'm just going to stand out of vision and hope that he overextends for one more wave and then kill him. And that's going to be a rinse and repeat thing as. Ramos is actually maxed out on levels. Yeah, he's massive at this point in the game. Three major items done with an extra blasting wand in the back pocket. 
be cool if once you hit level 18, the experience that you gained was shared amongst the rest of the team. That would be cool. That would be great. The split pushing gives you that extra experience advantage, but there's no merit in the split pushing for experience. Got it. Ship it. <laughs> I'll let him know, mate. Don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> As Spooks is going to start this dragon. It's actually a solo effort right now. Although, always a team effort for objectives. Chief's going to make sure they go in for Chief's it. Caught. caught by a stun hook on a swiper, but he's very tanky. Right though, flank. around the side, looking for the flank. Dragon goes to Chiefs, but Sin still trying to fight Raimai, so he gets absolutely wrecked as Swiffer cleanses off a hook. Now the Chiefs are going to come in and pull the fight. Chippies is forced to flash away. Alter use their card to up as well. Double kill there for Kindred. Last ball doesn't land for Radiant. No slow as he tries to pick for Juves. But Rogue's forced to flash out as well. Chiefs win another team fight. Chiefs absolutely destroy the team fight. Raimeister, I'm pretty sure, didn't even get his Zonias off. Yeah, I didn't even use it. Got absolutely destroyed. I would have used it personally to dodge the Kindred's third proc. Timed well with Swiper, who hard carried that fight. They have so much time now. And the two carries dead on Sin. That's at least the inhibitor. And most likely the Baron with it. Yep, we'll actually back away for the bigger objective. But they've already broken the base in one spot. Chiefs, going to be real tricky for Sin to try and contest for this Baron, but not impossible. But maybe death time is a little too long. We'll see what they want to do here. But the Chiefs, they have one plan already. They already set it up about yeah. five minutes ago. They're going straight to Baron. They've started it already. Sin, taking a very safe route into the pit, but they're going to lose the Baron before they even get there. Yeah, Sin's winning strategy revolves around getting the perfect flank off. Chiefs, they've always set up vision control, especially even around that Dragon for the fight to the point where the flanks are spotted and reacted to accordingly. They haven't found what they're looking for and that's where Chiefs run them over. One inhibitor, one Baron down again. It's the second one. Sin, more than on the back foot now. Card are going to clear out what he can, but Juves is real deep in enemy territory. Going to get slowed up by the Kindred. Lantern is there, does take it. But Juves, it's so much damage. Yeah, why was he over there? I don't know. There's nothing over there. <laughs> Like there's actually nothing over there. Fair enough. Chief's going to group now into the bottom side. That's why we're going to go ahead and deal with Rhymeister. He's back in the top lane to his old tricks. You can see that poor mini got crit for 1,200 damage. Jin. Jin's starting to do real work. Jin's taunts are amazing. Did you hear that? Just murmurs everyone who's watching. In the middle of walking around. Oh, the best insane champion in the game. I can agree with that. Maybe the Besides most insane as well. Who knows? Oh, who's more insane? That's the real question. I think probably Jin. I think Jinx it's like, is like just different genuinely. kinds of insane, right? One's like explosives insane. Yeah. One's like artistry insane. Jin is real creepy, man. <laughs> In a good way. Yeah. It's like the Riddler and the Joker. Yeah. If they're both really evil. This bull talking to land in off the chip. He's, he's actually pretty tanky. Already misses the last shot as well. Just to disappoint me. But Chief's still pushing. Yeah. Not sure the ulti matters too much. This tower's going to melt. Rhymeister's busy on the other side. Yeah. Chief's brute force. Ejim hooked 4v4 effectively. But without Rhymeister, Sinister is struggling to pick a fight. Ejim's actually frontlining right now. Ooh. And Azir just sends out the soldiers for a huge amount of damage. Swift are going to get hooked up. Taunt lands in there as well. This might be the fight they want, but lands respite. He's going to go in as the ulti kicks them all out. Drew's now on the front side. He's just going to go down to all of the damage. Well played fight there for Chiefs. They lock up Rogue with a pillar. He plays to try and get the safety, but Spooks goes god like a swiper. 1v1's the Diana. Bottom lane inhibitor goes down. The Chiefs going to close in for the kill. And a convincing game one out of this Chiefs roster. They are just tearing through the base. Kadra D is in trouble as well. Yeah, it flashes out of the way. Does not go down, but the Chiefs just looking to end the game. Sin, only two people left alive right now. And not sure they can defend. Swipe again as Oink went out. Kadra in threat of dying. Jin moves in for the final crit. There's one for Raider as he takes out Kadra. Nexus goes down, and the Chiefs take a very clean first game. And a big effort, most importantly, from Spooks on the side of the Chiefs. It felt like Raider was a facilitator in that game. Just made it happen with his curtain call. Spooks the hyper carry doing the most damage. Impressive from the Chiefs in game one. I mean, early game looked good for Sin as it almost always does. You could see where they were looking to try and get stuff done, but mid game fumbles, Chiefs hold on, and then late game Chiefs are still Chiefs. Absolutely right. The scary thing to me is there are too many carries on the Chiefs <laughs> right now. Too many. Certainly are. And looked like there was a lot in that team call, but let's go back to the experts and get their thoughts on the game.
Thank you so much, Pay for Your Time. I am, of course, Jake Spawn Tiberian. Joining me are the experts, Matthew Fish Stewart and Max Atlas Anderson. I knew you were going to do it. As soon as you said experts, I'm like, all right, we're under the bus. Don't worry about it. Get us in there. And let's break down that game because Chiefs, with quite a impressive performance but i want to talk about what they mentioned at the end there the wealth of carries they have and the fact that one of them is not currently swiffer <laughs> <laughs> we, we have sum- spoken about this right already like he's a facilitator let's be honest. Rust, rusty yeah. summed it up quite nicely that game uh chiefs wi- uh, chiefs whiffer yeah. yeah that's pretty good chief whiffer yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't great um but i do want to get serious here because it seemed that they, they mentioned spooks and i do want to give him an honorable mention but i want to talk about the guy that he got ahead which was Swiper. Brandon Holland up there in the top lane because it seemed like when Diana wanted to team fight, Swiper was like, I can out team fight you. My W completely counteracts what you want to do. You can't dive onto my back line. We've already got a good team to deal with this. And then if you want to split push, I'm just going to kill you, Ryan Meister. Swiper had a fantastic game. Yeah, and it was all epitomized at the end of that game as well. You saw, like, we watched this team fight unfold. Everything was fantastic for the Chiefs. Didn't see the mid lane. I didn't see the top lane. Then in the bottom of our screen, we noticed... Swiper takes down Rymeister. That 1v1 has affected the whole game because Swiper proved already that no matter who else was there, he was going to kill Rymeister, and he did it over and over again that game. And for a team which relies really heavily on their mid laner being Rymeister, you pick a Diana going into a team composition that has Poppy, a champion that can single-handedly shut you down in a split push, stop you in those team fights, and have a massive game on Swiper, it's really difficult for Sin to work around that. Not to mention the fact that they also had the Trundle to deal with the the, um, the Ramus. Ramus. So, of course, no tanky frontline there at all. Juice was behind early on. But I want to talk about Kindred. Because that Lamb's Respite, it's like, no, Rymaster, you can't do what you do every single game, which is explode the carry and then get the team fight. Because Lamb's Respite, always there to save the yep. whole team. And as soon as he's in there, just gets CC'd up and destroyed by the Chiefs. Yep, then Poppy stops people jumping in and then... Chief Whiffer manages to somehow land his ultimate a couple of times. No, he doesn't need his auto attack for three cents. <laughs> just in the cacophony. Yeah. That's all he was doing, playing in the bar. But yeah, and you know, a couple of the uh, team fights we saw, Swiffer actually didn't even ult people. He altered choke points for Radiator to stand behind because he just understood where that was coming from. And the other thing I want to talk about is I actually liked Sin's macro play in that game, but I thought their execution was a little bit lacking because when you're up against a Jin and Azir, a Poppy and a late game Trundle, you understand that you're probably going to get outscaled. So they may multiple teleport plays during the mid game that if they had been like a little bit more successful could have finally clawed that game back because they had a horrible early game and then the playmaking ability of this team to be able to make the ballsy plays that counted very much impressed me. Yeah, that top lane play was fantastic. Of course, the flash after the hook because he managed to get um, Diana in there with the... um, the Dark Passage. Dark passage. Yep. I yep. got Sorry, you. I'm just not very good at Turkish League of Legends teams. They give me, uh, <laughs> <laughs> give me horrors just yeah. a little bit. Yeah, Cardridge was on this side as well. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's very, very difficult going up against that one. But yeah, yeah, no, no. Um, having Jakey manage to land all the hooks, Rogue. getting... Yeah, no, but I understand well, I exactly what you're saying. Off me, let's be real. Yeah, so Rogue <laughs> able to make the play happen in the top lane where they did get both people teleporting in. Chippies with a very good teleport did set the tone of how Sin wanted to play the game. Unfortunately, guys, they did fall in game one. Chiefs were able to take it, but don't go anywhere. In three and a half, we're going to have two games between the Chiefs and Sin coming right up around the corner. <laughs>